Hello people, this is Sonali, the Melodramatic Bookworm. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to the Melodramatic Bookworm family. I'm here today with a brand new reading vlog. And in this vlog, I will be reading the thousandth book of my life. I am on triple nine right now and I am going to be starting the thousand book. I thought for a long time which book should it be, should I give the honor of being the thousand book that I've ever read and I looked around me and one book stood out. It's from my shelves and I will be reading, tabbing, annotating the whole thing. Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Elizabeth Gilbert is one of my most favorite authors of all time and every single one of her books has filled me with this sort of awe with the way with the ease she writes with the way she brings out human emotions in uh, in the pages. This one has been one that's been on my TBR for so long that I can't even remember when I bought it. Plus, I've also, I think I've predicted that this will be a five star read for me. Big Magic, the name itself. I think this fits perfectly with what I have in mind. I mean, I shouldn't be making such a huge deal out of this, but for me personally, it is a huge deal. Having read thousand books in my life is a huge deal, especially since I have some role models to look up to. My dad has read 1300, so we are going to beat that score soon hopefully so uh, that's why i am really 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 excited to be reading this book i'm excited on two counts thousand book elizabeth gilbert book that's it doesn't get better than this so now i'm going to sit back here and read my preferred place of reading my bones are like oh thank you so i'll sit here i have my coffee i have obviously my book I have my highlighters, I need to choose which one and I have my sticky notes, I need to get some tabs and my pen but let's get reading. This is what kicks off this whole book. She starts with an anecdote about someone she has never met but she knows uh, and uh, it all comes down to this. We are all walking repositories of buried treasure. I believe this is one of the oldest and most generous tricks the universe plays on us human beings, both for its own amusement and for ours. The universe buries strange jewels deep within us all and then stands back to see if we can find them. The hunt to uncover those jewels, that's creative, creative living. The courage to go on that hunt in the first place, that's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. The often su surprising results of that hunt, that's what I call big magic. We all know that fear is a desolate boneyard where our dreams go to desiccate in the hot sun. I've been reading the same sentence multiple times because I just can't get it out of my head. Basically, your fear is like a mall cop who thinks he's a Navy SEAL. He hasn't slept in days, he's all hopped up on Red Bull and he's liable to shoot at his own shadow in an absurd effort to keep everyone safe. 
Okay, I realize that I have, I don't have a bookmark. I need to go and get one bookmark. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick break now. Um, I finished the first section, which is called courage. Having courage, knowing what fear is, how to treat fear, what fear is and how you can treat fear. She's talking about the difference between being brave and being fearless and uh, what why creativity needs fear and wh why both of them go hand in hand everywhere it's just 27 pages and it reminded me why i love elizabeth gilbert's writing so much i don't know how it's going to go next but at least at the moment this is a book that i am delighted to be reading i mean this is so gripping it's easy to read it's gripping so i will be starting with the second part which is called enchantment uh, but first I have to go find a bookmark. See you on the other side. So I'm at a point in this book, I'm on page 56 and uh, there has been this whole idea in which she says that ideas have minds of their own and that they are sentient being kinds of. And um, it's sort of it scratched me the wrong way because at one point she is like uh, but people do draw hateful conclusions like this all the time people convince themselves that they have been robbed when they have not in fact been robbed she might be talking about uh, the fact where people cry wolf about uh, plagiarism but it is generalizing it in such a broad manner it's a sort of a weird thing to say because plagiarism is a real thing and to dismiss it out of hand like this i mean the whole setup that she's talking about in this anecdote in which she talks about meeting and patch it uh, and uh, that whole conversation that whole interaction came out as weird to me she's like such a thinking comes from a wretched allegiance to the no notion of scarcity from the belief that the world is a place place of dearth and that there will never be enough of anything to go around. The motto of this mentality is somebody else got mine. I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I get the larger picture. I get what she's trying to say. But somehow it feels dismissive of the other huge conflict that is present in the creative industry. So it's the 3rd June, it's the afternoon of the 3rd June, about 3.30 and I have gotten through only 6 pages since I started reading today. It's not been a very productive day so far. Everything hurts and I'm sleep deprived and I need to catch a nap uh, otherwise I won't be able to function. So what I'm going to do is against my will i am going to pause reading this put all of this aside and sleep for a bit i will make quite a bit of progress today I, that much i'm sure i'll probably see you in an hour or in a couple of hours so i've taken a nap i've regrouped and i started reading this again restarted reading this from where i left off i finished reading the second uh, section which is called enchantment and in this section she is talking about ideas and the magic of ideas and how ideas drift in this world they are sentient uh, beings of their own and it is sort of connected to creativity and inspiration and you have to look at it as another part that is with you and not like that is you and even though i I'm like very skeptical about what she is trying to say. I do see what she is saying and I do understand that because a lot of human emotions, a lot of human traits like 
ego and uh, thinking of oneself as above everyone else and all of that comes into play when you when one thinks of oneself as a genius and uh, to consider one's ideas or to consider one's creativity as something you have instead of something that you are and as to that uh, whole thing about uh, inspiration and about people looking at it as a sort of a deception or sort of a stealing of ideas plagiarism i mean i was i was still in two minds at the time when i was uh, when i made that clip but then again it, it i see the whole context the bigger context about what she's saying in here uh, even though th there's a tiny half percent in the back of my brain that's going shouldn't that be bothering you i'm just like i bring f to the front of my brain all of the evidence that she's trying to put everything in a very contextual very objective manner so the next section is called permission and oh by the way i let me show you my bookmark it's one of the most gorgeous bookmarks that i own okay so back to the point third section is called permission uh, and i will take a little break uh, before i move on with the book This is turning out to be so motivating and I think when I did that five star prediction when I predicted that this book would be five stars for me I was exactly predicting this outcome that I would be so inspired so motivated by the big magic that she's talking about but also about the talk about creativity and your passion and your inspiration uh, look at what she says here Your own reasons to create are reason enough. Merely by pursuing what you love, you may inadvertently end up helping us plenty. Do whatever brings you to life then. Follow your own fascinations, obsessions and compulsions. Trust them. Create whatever causes a revolution in your heart. The rest of it will take care of itself. Technically it isn't that easy, but this just gives me hope. She talks from experience, so So I feel suitably chastened right now because uh, there's this part where the author's friend, an Italian filmmaker, indie filmmaker, I think, they wrote to uh, Werner Herzog, who is a German filmmaker, a very famous German filmmaker apparently, and complained about how it is very difficult to make films in this current scenario, the world, about how badly his career was going, how nobody liked his movies, how difficult it had become to make films. in a world where nobody cares where everything is so example uh, expensive where there is no funding for the arts where public taste have run to the vulgar in the commercial blah 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 and then Werner Herzog he writes back with one of the most it's not caustic but it is pulling the filmmaker up short for complaining so he says quit your complaining it's not the world's fault that you wanted to be an artist it's not the world's job to enjoy the films you make and it's certainly not the world's obligation to pay for your dreams nobody wants to hear it steal a camera if you must but stop whining and get back to work and then uh, the author's comment on this is i think it's a mighty act of human love to remind somebody that they can accomplish things 
by themselves and that the world does not automatically owe them any reward and that they are not as weak and hobbled as they may believe. I'm equal parts offended and chastened. Not offended really. When you sit and think about it, it's true to a large extent because I shouldn't expect the world to fall in line with whatever I decide to do. But I also disagree to some extent because when he says uh, there's hardly any reward for the kind of work that we do, it is true. So that is the conundrum here. I agree and disagree with what is in this. It's still an admirable way of saying things though. You know what I just said about complaining and the, like the Werner Herzog thing and all of that. Uh, in the next chapter, at the start of the next chapter, she says, stop complaining. Artists complain as if they weren't the ones to have chosen uh, what they were doing and as if they weren't the one to have chosen it with their whole hearts. My question is, we are human. We get tired. We get annoyed. You are calling complaining annoying. But it is human to be annoyed by something, but it's not okay for that, for any particular human to talk about how draining, how tiring it is. Constant complaining, I get it. It's a sort of, it, it is annoying. It gets into your brain, it whacks your system and all of that. But from time to time, I think we are entitled, that word again, as I talk about entitlement, it's also about the creative entitlement that she was talking about earlier. It's a different context, but maybe we are entitled to vent our frustrations, to vent about our particular situation at any given point in time. I see that she is trying to put us on the positive path, on the optimistic path, but to say that uh, you chose this field, so you have to live with it and all of that. You think we don't know that? Why do you think we work so hard to move out of the spaces that don't give us joy? Everything has that one point of annoyance that makes us want to burst out. We love what we do, but sometimes it, it just gets too much. It just gets too much to the point where our minds and our hearts would explode if we didn't say anything out loud, if we don't vent, if we don't rant. So uh, I'm sorry, but even though I agree about the constant complaining, I wouldn't say that to talk about one's issues or to talk about what is difficult about, about one's job is a bad thing. I wouldn't say that is a bad thing. Okay, so I'm just wrapping up my reading for the day of Big Magic, which is my thousand book. I have to mention it every single time, right? I'm on page 157 and my brain isn't taking anything in anymore. I thought I'll finish this section, which goes up to 199 or something, but I don't think I will be able to. I thought I'll go to sleep after finishing the whole thing, but nope, that's not happening. And I'm really smiling right now because I've ended today's reading on a sort of on a high note on a funny note of sorts so here she says but to yell at your creativity saying you must earn money for me is sort of like yelling at a cat it has no idea what you're talking about and all you're doing is scaring it away because you're making really loud noises and your face looks weird when you do that in this whole chapter she's talking about how um, Demanding that your creativity, demanding that your inspiration, your art uh, need, should make you money. It needs to uh, make you money. It's sort of putting it under pressure and it's killing that creativity. Uh, so she gives this disclaimer where she says that if you are happy with what you're doing, if you have the financial freedom that 
uh, your art is giving you that your creativity is giving you then well and good but if that's not happening and uh, if all you are doing is complaining about it then maybe you should look for a day job while you uh, give that creativity that inspiration a space to breathe which is right 95% of me agrees with her when she says that the world doesn't owe creatives anything because creatives are the ones who have chosen to do what they have chosen to do and uh, they can't demand things or uh, fall in line just because they chose to do it but the other 5% is like the world needs to acknowledge art and creativity i don't agree that art is useless i mean i get why she is saying it i get from where she is coming i understand that point of view but i don't agree that art is useless i don't agree that it is uh, meaningless maybe it's not probably the most meaningful thing out there but it is definitely not meaningless and useless i think that the world does owe art and creativity something because art and creativity are what make the world what make human life more colorful so without that uh, it would just be a blank canvas so it's a whole deadlock going on around there i don't know if we'll be able to break that deadlock anytime soon but that is what, that is my opinion maybe i don't demand more of my art and creativity i demand more of the world i demand more that the world sees art and creativity as a whole not not just me i know what i got into when i got into it so yeah that's where i'm at uh in this book at the moment uh stopping it for the night and i will get back to it tomorrow so yeah i'll see you on the other side bye hey there it might look like i haven't left this place and that i started uh filming again just 10 minutes after i ended that last clip but it is the evening of the 4th of june and i have been reading and i finished that last section that i left halfway through uh and it's called persistence how you should give your creativity and your ideas the space to unfurl the space to grow and you should give it the chance to either fail or succeed irrespective of what it is getting things done is always better than never doing it in the first place because there are going to be people who are going to judge you no matter what you do so uh, instead of fixating on the fact that oh no i'm going to fail uh, it would be better for you personally for your creativity personally to do whatever is inside of you bring it out in front of people put it out into the world and then don't bother about the results because there are so many other factors also involved and this is something that i really like it it called out to me it motivated me i was feeling super pumped after having read it this book is something magical even though i don't agree with a few things that she says in here it i have to admit that it holds that magic it pulls that creativity that magic out of you so this is something that i will recommend irrespective of how wholeheartedly i recommend it uh, i'll read to you the thing that made me pause the patron goddess of creative success can sometimes seem like like a rich capricious old lady who lives in a giant mansion on a distant hill and who makes really weird decisions about who gets her fortune she sometimes rewards charlatans and ignores the gifted she cuts people out of her will who loyally served her for for their entire lives and then gives them a series to that cute boy who cut her lawn once she changes her mind about things we try to divine her motives but they remain occult she is never obliged to explain herself to us in short the goddess of creative success may show up for you or she may not probably best then if you don't count on her or attach your definition of personal happiness to her whims maybe better to reconsider your definition of success period there are so many <laughs> parts in life where i would love to apply that to i realize that there's going it's going to be difficult as a social media person to uh, detach the idea that putting content out and people not seeing it or people not liking it are two different things because uh, social media relies on the fact that the more the people that see your content the better your chances are at making it and either way i i'm not sure if this applies to social media because there are a lot of other factors at play as well but uh, this is something that 
I'm taking away from this section that uh, irrespective of whether or not you think your work will succeed or whether you think it will fail, just work on it, put it out there, at least complete it, finish it. Being done with something or completing something is much better than never finishing it, never getting to it. And that's why perfectionism is a sort of a fear cloaked in like a mink coat and sunglasses. That's what she says in the book. And I, you know, kind of have to agree. So basically perfectionism, or what she says is that it can corrode something inside of you. This section I absolutely love. I mean, there are a couple of things that I didn't pay much attention to, but this book is one such that when you read it, you take things that inspire you, you take the things that uh, bring out the magic within you and use it on yourself, use it for your own life, use it for your own creativity. So I have about 70 pages to go. I'm on page 201. The next section is called Trust. I will start reading this. I think this is the penultimate section. And then there's one tiny section towards the end before the book ends. So I'm just going to sit back and read. I will check back in uh, either once when I have something to say or when I'm done with the book. So I finished reading the thousandth book of my life which is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I am so glad that I picked this book up. There's so much of heart in this book. There's so much of authenticity in the way she talks about creativity and ideas and how to treat your creativity and how to treat yourself, how to see yourself, how to be that person to bring creativity into the world and to hone your creativity. I mean, I might not agree with a few of the thoughts that she's put in there as you've already seen in, uh, during the entirety of this vlog but that does not mean that I do not respect them uh, because I know that they might not work for me or I might not agree with them but there are people for whom it will work because they're not wrong it's just a different way of looking at things just a different way of seeing the way creativity is it's a different way of treating creativity and of treating the whole world of art and artists it's not like she she's writing this for the world as a sort of a self-help guide yes it is projected as a self-help guide but uh, it is obvious as she says in some earlier uh, chapter that she has written this for herself. She has written it because she wants to put these out into the world. She wants to put these thoughts of, of creativity and art, art and uh, how the world sees artists and how we see our own creativity out into the world. And when people like it, it's a big plus because she doesn't put creativity out into the world. Her creative works out into the world in order for them to just succeed. She has accepted that they might succeed or they might fail. But this is a huge success in my opinion. For me personally, this book is a four star read. Uh, I, I'm not giving it a full five stars as I had predicted that I would give it uh, because of the slight disagreements between my opinions and hers. But that's not the only thing. There's just that something that's stopping me from giving it a full five out of five stars. But I finished reading this. I have uh, tabbed it. Wait. Yeah, I've tabbed it, I've written, I've highlighted, I've written in it. I know that I will go back to read this, at least snippets of it from time to time because there are some important things that I know that I will put into my brain, especially don't lock your creativity up inside. Let it out into the world, irrespective of what you think it is, finish it. Because if you leave it unfinished, nobody is going to be able to see it. Any work that you put out there, people, there will be people who don't like it. So you might as well work to the best of your abilities, put it out there, work, and that's how you'll build your whole profile. It's not about build, building profile, it's about being creative, but you get what I'm trying to say. Thousand Book of My Life, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. This had been on my TBR for a long time and I'm so glad I finally read it. So what do you think of this little vlog? Uh, did you like it? Did you not like it? Have you read Big Magic? If you have, what do you think about it? If you haven't, will you pick it up after watching this vlog? And which book would you choose to be the thousandth book of your lifetime? 
or if you have already read thousand books which was your thousand book it's like it feels like a milestone to me let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you if you like this video please like it and share it to spread the word and if you like my content and would like to see more from me don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the bell icon beside the subscribe button to get notified as and when i post new videos Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until next time, keep reading, keep watching and add melodrama to your life.